What is the government thinking? Because, you know, I didn't like Bush and I don't like Obama, but really under Obama, stuff has gotten markedly three or four times worse, uh, not just on that front, but NDAA, uh, protest bills being passed where it's a felony. I mean, it's getting downright creepy, even for somebody like myself that is just, you know, wildly untrusting of government. I mean, it's even starting to really uh, overshoot what I thought they would do, uh, I mean, I guess I'm babbling. The point is, what are they thinking? Are they trying to turn the whole public against them? Uh, listen, it's not babbling at all, Alex. Uh, you bring up very, uh, very important points that bear repeating over and over and over again until this sinks in to uh, a strong majority of the American people. Far too many of our fellow citizens, uh, despite your show, despite the work that you do in getting these ideas out there and the, the work that I do in my small way to teach the Constitution and fight in court against uh, the government, despite our efforts, there still are way too many people out there who are willing to accept this intrusiveness on the part of the government because they believe or sense that it makes them safer. Of course, it doesn't. And that does not still, even if it did make us safer, that does not make it right. It does not make it constitutional. And uh, you mentioned the, uh, the so-called VIPER program, V-I-P-R, that the TSA is now using to stop, uh, uh, to stop trucks on interstates, to go to uh, sporting events, to go to bus uh, stations, to go to, to train stations, uh, and arbitrarily. Uh, start uh, start frisking people, going through their bags, uh, and, and so forth. And this administration, what makes it particularly troubling uh, with this administration is that this administration, the Obama administration, both as a candidate when Senator Obama was running for president and shortly after he was sworn in as president uh, over three years ago, he said explicitly many times that he was going to pay closer heed to the Constitution, was not going to uh, you know, conduct the surveillance and, and intrusive uh, activities of the Bush administration. Uh, but not only has he continued them in many respects, as you just indicated, Alex, he's, he's accelerated them. And Congress has gone along. Uh, uh, have you seen the video, uh, Congressman um, Bob Barr joining us, listeners? Have you seen last Tuesday the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, Panetta, uh, and the chairman of the uh, Joint Chiefs, Dempsey, with the Secretary of Defense, Panetta, up there telling... Uh, senators that we don't need to get approval for wars now from Congress. The president gets it from the U.N. Have you seen that? I, I did, and it's one of those things that at first uh, I thought, I can't be, uh, this is a joke. Uh, this is like uh, the, the Daily Onion or whatever the, yeah. <laughs> the, the newspaper is. But darned if it, uh, you know, you look at it, and unfortunately, as bad as this is, the genesis for this started under Bush 1. When Bush one went to the United Nations to get the United Nations seal of approval uh, to uh, to kick Saddam Hussein out of Kuwait back in 1991, uh, it started under Bush one, and then it continued under Clinton and continued under Bush two, and now uh, we've uh, we've moved to the point where we have an administration saying it is more important for us to get the approval of uh, the permission. Uh, foreign governments to place our troops uh, in combat uh, conflict situations more important than it is to get the approval of the Congress of the United States. Unbelievable. You're right, and, 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 and Breitbart went with that quote, but within that seven-and-a-half-minute tape, then I went and watched the raw footage, it was even worse, on C-SPAN site, they, the Senator Sessions keeps saying, look, go ahead and say Article 1, Section 8, Clause 11. You know it's Congress that's in charge, right? And the Secretary of Defense says, we get it from the U.N., that's where the President gets it in NATO. And, and, and then the Senator says, I'm, I'm losing my breath here. I can't believe... And, and I watched the weird surliness of the generals behind him. It was almost like a standoff. Because I've watched so many congressional hearings. You know, you've been there with those guys in front of you. But in the past, they were deferential towards Congress, their bosses. They were acting... Kind of like, hey, move over, little dog. You know, fat dog's moving in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, it, 
I, don't, I, I certainly hope that we don't face four more years of this administration. Uh, but even if we don't, if we do have uh, hopefully a new president uh, sworn in January 20th of, uh, of 2013, uh, these things, uh, these problems are not going to change overnight uh, because they, they reflect a, a very gradual but very substantive change in the way uh, our government operates. It's going to take uh, a lot of continued work on, on your part, Alex, on our part with Liberty Guard, other organizations, and individuals staying involved. We have to turn this around because every time they do something like this, it builds on uh, what has gone before and strengthens the ability of government to simply run roughshod over the American people and to run roughshod over the Constitution of the United States. I know you're a news hound, and any question I've ever asked you, you've uh, been informed of it and been able to comment. This just broke this morning. I don't know if you've seen it yet, but uh, soldiers asked to disarm during Leon Panetta's speech in Afghanistan. The Associated Press, London Telegraph, are reporting, the Pentagon admits, that when Panetta went and spoke to a group of Marines, they asked that they all leave their arms uh, in their barracks, and, 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 and the Pentagon went on to say that it was for his security. Have you ever heard of something like this now, where, where the Secretary of Defense is afraid to be around U.S. troops with weapons? No, and uh, you know, further on that story is uh, that you just referred to is the fact that part of the, the U.S. Uh, general's uh, excuse or rationale for doing this is, well, we, have, we had Afghan soldiers here, and we didn't want to make them feel that they were being discriminated against by having them leave, leave their weapons, and U.S. troops wouldn't have to. So in order to make everybody feel good uh, and not that they were being discriminated against, we wouldn't uh, allow any weapons in. That's the political uh, correct tyranny. Like uh, yeah, yeah. Everybody's a slave now. Everybody loses their rights. Uh, uh, that is that nanny state tyranny. Sorry, go ahead. No, it, 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 it is. Uh, it's, it's the same sort of approach uh, that we see over and over and over again here domestically in this country. Say, just take the gun issue. You have people out there who commit criminal acts with firearms. Uh, well, what do we do? Rather than strengthening our law enforcement effort to get those people and bring them to justice, that is the criminals who improperly use firearms for commissions of crimes, what we do is we inconvenience and deny everybody uh, the freedom to possess a firearm when and where they need it. And it's the same sort of thing that we see now in, in the military over there with, with this incident. It is twilight zone. What do you make of the NDAA and Obama saying he was against it, the, the detention of U.S. citizens, the disappearing, the black bagging, uh, and then we learned he demanded it be added. Then he said, well, don't worry, I won't sign it. Then he did sign it. And then he said, but don't worry, I won't implement it. But then the head of the FBI and the Justice Department have both said, well, we might do that, actually. And then you've got the shipping guns into Mexico. I mean, th if we know about this, what, I mean, what else are they planning? Why do you think they're doing this? Uh, the, 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 the first part of your question is a very good one, and that is we're as bad as it is with what we're seeing here uh, with regard to the, uh, uh, the NDAA, uh, TSA, and so forth. What we're seeing is the tip of the iceberg. Uh, there is so much of this going on below the radar screen that we don't know about. Uh, that's what's really frightening, which, which is another reason why it's so important to address at least what we do know about, because there's so much that they're doing uh, in furtherance, these same policies that we don't uh, that we don't know about. Uh, what was the second part of your question, Alex? I'm sorry, I got off well, on a tangent. Well, there. No, no, no. I was asking uh, Congressman, why do you think they're doing this? Because it's only making their approval ratings drop. It's actually waking people up. It's great for my radio show, but I'd rather have my radio show recede off into the you know wild blue yonder than 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 then be right about just a total fascist takeover but when the when the military is being told that they can take on citizens when we're being told we can be disappeared uh and we're seeing such deception uh, i mean w why do you think government's doing this ultimately because it's all about control and you used a word early on in uh, in this segment that is a very appropriate one and that is acclimation they are acclimating people to having no privacy whatsoever. 
as Ayn Rand said many, many years ago, Alex, as you know, you've studied her as well as I have, uh, that if you take away a man's privacy, you gain the power to control that person absolutely. They know that if, if we have no sense of privacy, if we expect and, uh, and, and if we expect and give the government the power to know everything there is about us and to control us, then we have lost freedom. Uh, that's ultimately what's going on here. They also rely on the fact that even though these issues are important to you and to I and to a lot of Americans, the fact of the matter is by the time the election rolls around, everybody will be focused on what is the government doing for me for the economy. And these issues traditionally do not factor directly in a national election, unfortunately. Hopefully this time will be different, and we can get people to focus on these issues when they go to the polls in November. But normally they don't, which is why the government is able to get away with this, mm -hmm. despite the fact that it seems to be dropping their approval numbers. Final question. We appreciate your time, uh, Congressman Bob Barr, heading up Liberty Guard. Where do you see it ending? I mean, you don't have a crystal ball, but I, I see the momentum is shifting against the TSA. People really are getting more and more angry, but the system seems to be digging their spurs in. I mean, in your gut, how do you see this ending? I see some rays of hope, to be honest with you, Alex. Uh, you, you get the message out there. The Orlando uh, International Airport uh, is now moving again. They are not backing down in their effort to get TSA out of their airport so that they can have private individuals, private security services uh, handle the security, uh, the security screenings. Uh, hopefully, people in the Congress, key people like John Micah, who represents part of the Orlando area and heads the Transportation uh, Committee in the House, will back them up. Uh, to some extent, he's fighting the Republican leadership. The Republican leadership uh, and the Democratic leadership in, in, in the Congress also they don't like to take on these government agencies. Uh, but there are some individual members, Daryl Issa from California, John Micah from Florida. They're, they're really spearheading these Well, that's good news. Let me throw this in real quickly. What about, there's more than one way to skin a cat. We have insider trading stuff opening up against members of Congress. What about going after Chertoff, who's making money off these scanners? I mean, there's got to be more than one way, because if we cut the money off of the profiteering, then they won't want to you know, radiate grandma. Uh, if they would do that, that would be a very effective way, Alex. But uh, you know, we saw it with the, the defense authorization bill and the FAA. Uh, all of these government agencies are getting increased budgets, not reduced budgets. And as long as Congress just talks about it and does not cut off the funding, nothing of any substance is going to happen to reform these agencies. And that's why they're so arrogant. Well, just because they have the power doesn't mean they're not losing the info war. They are losing the hearts and minds, and they cannot continue to govern with any amount of brute force if they don't have that. Uh, former Congressman Bob Barr, LibertyGuard.org. Thank you for the time, sir. Alex, it's always an honor. Thank you for having me. Thank you. There goes Bob Barr. Um, wow. Tonight on the Nightly News, an extended hour-plus interview with Dave Mustaine of Megadeth on politics, the New World Order, Endgame, and so much more. And then we've got some other big special reports in the nightly news as well. And, of course, we're always right here on the radio.